Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. A video that apparently is very badly needed, because almost every single day I get at least two comments that are like, I just started playing, I just got my first 100 emblems, what octogram unit should I pick up? And you know what? For new players, it's a fair question, because they may watch the tier list video, but, you know, the Octo Mutants have been ranked many, many times ago, and maybe you don't know what they look like, you're not really looking for them, it's hard to see them. Either way, I don't talk about them anymore. So, this is a good video because it will guarantee that it will be able to be found on the channel when you search and all that. And it's a very usable video because a lot of these units range greatly. So what we've done is we've got all eight of them, and we've got their wiki pulled up so we know what they do so we can go over them. So this video may actually get kind of long because I'm going to explain why they belong in what tier between must-have, nice-to-have, somewhat useful, not good, and trash. So, uh, um, I guess we'll just go in order. Octogram Dagrel. Where are you? Right here. Alright, so he is the Earth Octogram unit. He is on Octogram Bazaar and Stern of Spirit. His skills, uh, don't, well, they don't do that anymore. No, actually, it does do that. Right? Mm, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna do this instead. <laughs> Most of them are level one, or 180, so Octogram Dagrel. This will be much easier. All right, so his first skill, without the skill fusion, so that's, I guess that's the first thing we should talk about, is that this tier list is going to be based on the units only having one copy, right? Level 80, because at level 100, seven of these units get a skill fusion, and their skills do change a bit, some more than others. The only one that doesn't is Rimuru, because he's a protector. Um, but for, the, you know, the average newer player that's needing this video, you're not going to have enough shards to get the 100. You have enough to buy one. One. So we'll be ranking them as they appear at level 80 without the skill fusion. So Dagrel deals up to 250% instant earth damage. So as soon as you click that skill, he does it. it. You don't have to wait for the turn or anything. And then he nerfs his own defense by 15%, which you can stack down to zero defense if you really, really wanted to. And then his second skill is he increases his own alt gauge by up to 50%, and then hurts himself for 30% of his max HP. He nerfs himself on either skill for instant damage and a little bit of, well, not a little, but half his alt gauge. Uh, if you really want to know, when he does get the skill fusion, it does turn into a much better effect at level 10. It is now increases his alt damage by 50 and heals himself by 30%, which offsets the 30% that he hurts himself for to get alt gauge. So it kind of works a little better. But this is, again, assuming that he is only level 80. Um, right here with this skill set, Otgrim Dagrel is pretty trash. Pretty trash, you know? You do a little bit of instant damage, because at level 80 you don't have the highest attack stats, so the instant damage you do is going to be cut back and then you nerf yourself, or you give yourself 50% alt gauge, which, cool, and then you hurt yourself. I, I don't, I've never had a, an issue or a chance to see Dagro in like prime time gameplay or like, oh my god, I needed him. I think I used him once for a Jubilee like six months ago, and he was not the best option. So Dagro is just not a good pick. Don't pick Dagrel. I don't know. I don't care if you're a fan of Dagrel in the in the manga and the light novels. This unit is just not good for new people that only have one unit to buy. All right. Uh, moving on, Leon. I guess we'll we'll just keep doing this. Octogram Leon. Uh, you know what? Filter by force. This would make. Oh my god, I'm an idiot sometimes. You know that? All right. Octogram. No, hold on. Don't we have Octogram Bazaar? Uh, yeah, here we go. Octogram Bazaar. Not you. Confirmed. Oh, much easier. I'm an idiot. Uh, Leon. So he is light physical. He is a single target alt for 430%. His first skill converts any of his own orbs to orange. So if you have 
six Leon orbs and you use this skill, they will then become six orange Leon skills. If you have no Leon orbs, that skill does actually nothing for Leon, except boosting the alt gauge increase for oranges by 9%. And that's just across the board, if you happen to have any orange orbs. But again, he needs to have orbs for this convert to happen. And then his second skill is an alt damage buff by 50% and a 10% crit rate increase, which is really not good. If you do get him to 100 for whatever reason down the line, it becomes a much better skill. Uh, alt damage by 50% and then lowers alt damage resistance of the enemy by 30%. That's, that's fairly good right there for a 15 point skill. Um, but as it stands, Leon, he can be like an okay light DPS because he gives himself his own alt buff. Uh, a, and a piss poor 10% crit chance rate, but there's a lot of units, protectors even, that can give you crit now. You know, EX Guy exists. Maybe you have him, maybe you don't. Um, but uh, then again, EX Guy is also buffing your alt gauge by an extra, what, 30%? Or alt damage by 30%, so this skill becomes almost useless. Actually, it does become useless uh, if you have Guy with you, because you're giving yourself a higher alt buff and you're giving yourself guaranteed crits with that skill versus him giving himself a lower amount and then a 10% chance to crit. The second skill is again very dependent on him having orbs on the field to convert. Um, it, it's pretty not great, but again, he can suffice as a light DPS if you don't have one and you don't like the other units that are gonna be placed higher on the list. He's, he can be somewhat useful for a newer player that needs a light damager only somewhat useful. He's definitely not a first pick. Um, Lumi, I guess we can close these out. So we've done we've done Daggerel, we've done Leon. Alright, so Lumi. Lumi is a really, really good unit for endgame players. Alright? So her first skill, uh, not skill fused, at level 10, gives you a 20% increase in your alt damage. That caps out at 60%, so every time you use a skill you get 20, 40, 60% extra alt damage. And because this is a permanent buff until the end of battle, because it's a permanent buff, it does stack with, say, you know, Leon's temporary one turn buff of 50%, right? Because this says increase those total combos for one turn. So they will stack together. Now, if you try and use this skill and, you know, Guy, that we just got done talking about, they're both temporary one-turn alt buffs. They will not stack. It will only be Guy's because it is a higher percentage. But because Lumi has a permanent buff and Leon has a temporary buff, they will combine together. So this will be 50% plus 60, so 110% alt damage right there now, if you manage to use three stacks of Lumi, which may or may not happen depending on your box. So... She is a very good unit for middle to late game players who just want extra damage. Now, one thing to note is that if you have Protector Rimuru, because he also permanently buffs alt damage, uh, don't bring Lumi, because she will get overwritten within what, by three... If you use Protector Rimuru three times, this skill becomes irrelevant because they're both permanently stacking alt damage. It's not 20% from Rimuru and 20% from Lumi because those are, again, same permanent buffs that don't stack together, just like temporary buffs don't stack together. Or if they do, they take the higher value. So if you bring Protector Diablo, who's lowering alt resistance, yes, that works. If you bring, um, you know, the Frey that, you know, is on the rerun banner, yeah, she doesn't give ult, but Valentine will give you extra ult. And then she also can heal the person with the lowest HP, yeah, by 10%. So 20% up to 60, and then a 10% heal on the ally with the lowest HP available. And then when she does get skill fused, it goes up to everybody gets 10% heal, and it goes up to a cap of 80% alt damage, which is fairly good. So Valentine is nice to have. Uh, if you happen to have dupes of her, she does get extra protection gauge for the first three turns of the fight, which is really, really invaluable for for certain scenarios, for certain team builds. So up to five, up to turn three, so five, ten, fifteen if you leave her up front. It's a really, really good skill, but again, it needs dupes. So Valentine is nice to have. 
because she can increase your amount of damage dealt and give you extra protection gauge if you have her duped. All right, Guy. Octogram Guy is going to be the only one that will exist in the must-have category. So if that is all you need to know, who is must-have? It is Octogram Guy. Why? Well, because he has guaranteed stuns. Which is funny, because when he first came out, he was down in trash. Because you couldn't stun any of the hard content when he came out. But now, a Guy Crimson Renaissance has happened a few months ago. But he is a fire AoE. I don't care. I'm not using him for his AoE ult. He has a triple orb change, so three greens into three oranges, which is... You know, decent. Fine. We're about to get another orange meta as of recording this video. And then he also gives us a 10% uh, alt buff to orange. No, 10% all gauge buff to oranges, which is pretty negligible. But here we go. Chance to stun a single target 100%. Now again, like I said, older events, Conquest, the old Tempered Edges, a lot of the old Tempered Edges, um, they you can't stun them. Like, they have 100% resistance to stun, and this does not offset it. You just can't stun them. So in those cases, Guy is pretty trash. But in a lot of the new difficult content, like this current beatdown battle, or maybe this beatdown battle for Gabaru right now, he is the only unit right here, right? He's the only enemy. Or it's Ifrit. It's Ifrit. But you can stun him. And you can cheese the shit out of this on Inferno. And if you have the team build that, you know, can run a stun every single turn, then you could kill Jinfri just by keeping him stun locked. And that's great. That is high, high value for newer players that, you know, maybe not it's, in, maybe not it's Inferno 3, maybe it's Extreme. You can't beat Extreme, you can't get the dupes or whatever. EX3, stun his ass. Over and over and over until you just have wailed on him enough that he just dies from another ult because you've done so much continuous damage while him being able to do literally nothing to you. So, Guy is a must-have. He is top pick now for new players who are like, who do I need? You need Guy. It does suck that you can't stun some of the older events, but a lot of the units now, all these EX units, and you're summoning on high-value stuff and good units, they can clear all of the old content, Crucible, Conquest. Maybe not all the Tempered Edges, but you, you can definitely get through them with the EX units that have come out. And Guy is nice for those hard stages that are stunnable. So, Guy, definitely number one pick. If you had to choose, you would choose Guy. Because maybe he can't help you now, but he can help you later. Valentine can definitely help you later, later, later. Uh, Leon can't, and Dagrel can't. So... If that's what you need to know, you can click off the video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. But let's continue because we have four more units to rank. Octogram Romarus is an interesting, interesting pick because she is the best healer in the game. Unquestionably, the best healer in the game. Heals all allies by up to 60% of their max HP for 55 skill points. It's a hefty cost, but it's a hefty heal. Actually, is it 60? Is it 60 or is it higher than that? I actually don't remember. It is 60. 60% 60 heal. That's pretty good. Pretty good for a uh, tower, pretty good for the hero fight, if that's what you're going to do. And it's un... you know, it, it doesn't... Um, it's unbiased. It heals everybody. Really good skill. Her second skill is a little biased, because it's only wind attack by 15%, which means you have to be a wind unit to even take advantage of that. And it does skill fuse into a totally different skill. Increases all HP, max HP by 10%, and then uh, lowers attack by 20. That goes up because that's a level one skill. But again, level 80 Romarus can be useful in a pinch. She is nice to have as a big time healer if you don't have a healer and you find yourself dying. She's nice to have. Is she a must have? Definitely not. You could even claim her as somewhat useful rather than nice to have. But I think we'll leave her in somewhat useful, because I don't really use Romarus for a lot nowadays either. So, she's, she's again, the best healer in the game, but this game isn't really focused on healing, right? And even the defense battles now are being super restrictive, and you couldn't bring Romarus to heal you back up. So, eh. Eh. Whatever. 
Uh, moving on, Space Millum is the very first Octogram unit that was ever available to purchase because they came out in waves. Uh, they came out like ones and twosies every like every two months, every three months, and they drop another one and another one until we were all out. Uh, she was the very first one. We knew what Millum looked like as far as her artwork was concerned before the game even released because she was all hyped up to be like, oh, look at this free to play Millum. Look at her design. It looks really good. The autogram units, they look really good. Some of them just don't hold up. But she is a physical space unit. She is a single target alt, which at the time was the highest multiplier in the game. She had the highest attack stat in the game, which hilariously they had to nerf before she even came out because it was too high and it still ended up being quite high. Uh, her first skill, guaranteed pierce and pierce power for herself. And then the second skill is a 40% crit rate increase for all your peoples and lowers enemy guard power, which at the time was fairly good because no one was giving guaranteed crits when she came out. Um, Hakuro was the closest thing with like his 30% chance to crit, so 40% was great. It was great. It does skill fuse into an interesting skill. Uh, increases her own crit rate and own guard penetration. So she goes from semi um, selfish because her first skill is selfish, this skill is not, to incredibly selfish, giving herself guaranteed pierce and guaranteed crits now. Um, Milam is a pretty good damage dealing unit. Actually, better than Leon, technically, because we have a lot of people that are giving all already. They don't really need that. The pierce and pierce power is nice to have. The, the crits, again, like there are other units that give her crits. The Frey would give her crits. But she has, I believe, higher stats than Leon. I don't quote me on that. And I'm a little biased because it's Melum. She's nice to have as a single target space DPS unit. Um, if you put her underneath one of your other space units, <laughs> they get a huge stat buff. Uh, definitely not necessary, though. Not a must have. It's nice to have Melum as a DPS unit. Uh, Dino. Sad little Dino is just, again, not a good unit. Not a good unit in any way, shape, or form. He lowers an enemy's attack by 20% for three turns, and that increases by 10% every three turns that passes. That caps out at 50%. So, it starts at 20, it takes three turns to get 10%. So, 3, 6, 9. You have to go nine turns for this skill to max out at 50% attack debuff on an enemy. Nah, I'm not bringing him into a long form fight, I'll tell you that much. And then decreases the single target's water resistance by 18, I believe up to 20%. Whoop de friggin' do. Um, water Shuna does, I think, what, 30%? I think? Uh, um, and she buffs everybody's alt damage by 70%. And then this heal skill heals himself for 70% of his own max HP, and nerfs his own attack by 20%. Um, I've used him successfully once, and I think only once in the light 3.0 tempered edge against the Dark Veldora, um, just because I kept him super nerfed forever, and I was just healing myself. I, I don't really remember how that battle went. It was hilariously terrible, though. Um, Dino is garbage. He also has an AoE ult. Whoop do fucking do. Uh, don't, 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 don't buy Dino. Even with his skill fusion, don't, don't buy Dino. I don't even remember what he gets. Um, oh, he gives everyone a two turn continuous heal and then lowers a single target's attack by 30%. Oh, all targets single target attack. So he hits an AoE debuff, but only applies to attacks that hit one person. No, the, <laughs> no, Dino, Dino's garbage. Don't buy Dino. Dino has zero usage, just like Daggerl has zero usage in today's game. And that brings us to Rimuru, who is the only Octogram protector. And uh, it's unfortunate that, because he was the last unit to come out for the Octogram series, and people were hyped up. People were like, oh my god, I can't wait to see how busted Octogram Rimuru is. But, you know, this is coming off of a dud, a dud, a dud, you know, these two were like the first two units that ever came out. They, they were both out by December of 2021. Uh, Lumi followed after that. Guy broke the game for a, almost 12 hours when he released. <laughs> like the game was in emergency maintenance for 12 hours when Guy came out. And then we came out with these three duds and we're like, well, let's temper our expectations because these guys are just not, 
not it. So when Rimuru was finally announced, and he was announced as a protector, people were like, oh, well, that should be interesting, he should be a great protector. Psych. Octagram Rimuru is not a good protector. He is not a good unit, and it makes everybody, myself included, terribly sad that they shafted the MC <laughs> with this Octagram Protector. So he gives all allies attack and defense by 14%, which is decent, right? Everybody gets attack and defense. Further increases Octagram Bizarre characters by attack and defense 15%. So if this was capped out and you had it maxed out, it would give 30% stats to all seven of these units. Ooh. Uh, his protection skill increases all allies all allies attack until the end of battle by 8%. Unlimited. Heals all allies by 30% of their max HP and then gives you 30 skill points. It's not a permanent increase by 30, so it doesn't raise your cap to 160 to 190. It, or 130, 160, 190. It just gives you 30. Kind of like how Frey and Trainee give you 40 points as soon as you use them. Now, an untrained new player might think that this kit is actually really, really good. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not. Because you have to use Rimuru to continue to get the 8% stacks, right? And 8% is really not that good. Not that great. Uh, he heals you. Awesome. He gives you 30 points. Awesome. You know how much an orb change costs, generally? 25 points. You know how much it costs the next time you use it? 45 points. Uh, this 30 is not really going to get you that anymore once you use the orb change once. And if you need to orb change to a bunch of blues to make sure you can use Rimuru, you're very quickly going to eclipse this 30 point mark on your orb changing. And even if you run, like, a green focus team with the green buff, like, eventually those skills will just get out of hand, no matter how many skill points you get on a full hand of greens, because you got to get a full hand of greens, which means you got to orb change more. And then by then, maybe you've used Rimuru, like, twice. Maybe three times. And you've gotten a 90% heal over across that, however many turns it took, and you've got 24% attack at the end of the tight, as of, at the end of the other day. It's just not good. He doesn't work well on really any team. I tried him out. I tried to make him look good. And it was a sad, sad showcase video. So this Rimuru is not good. He is a protector. Yes, he is. He is not worth it, though. So here is the ranking. It took 22 minutes to get here, but I told you it was going to be a long video. Uh, guy, must have, nice to have, somewhat useful, not good, and trash, garbage, don't even pretend. Alright? Buy Octagram Guy first, and then probably buy Lumiere Millum. Or just keep feeding Guy so he's a higher dupe level and you get extra bonus on your event gauge, right? Extra, whatever it's called, the harvest bonus, something something, dark side, whatever they call it in the event meta stage because they get, they do, they are part of the bonus. Uh, right here, so if we go here, I haven't even done it for today, but special effect so we can see that I've got Lumi 15%, Guy at level 80 is 10%, Rommer is 10%, they're good for this, I, I guess, but again, really only get Guy and Lumi and then Milim, everyone else is very, very situational at best, but yeah, hopefully this helped you out, if it did, Please let me know if it didn't, because I took too damn long to get to the here at this point. Then, yeah, don't let me know that, too. I know I talk a lot sometimes, but I figured you guys would want some backstory on what makes them, you know, be placed in such a tier. But, uh, yeah, that's it for me, guys. Take it easy, and I'll see you all later.